It's been helping mankind for thousands of years. Alexander the Great, Cleopatra, and Christopher Columbus all knew of its benefits. And in more recent history, Gandhi, when asked how he still had so much energy in spite of all his fasting, said he drank aloe vera every day. It only grows in hot, dry climates, liking soils rich in minerals, and its one natural enemy is frost. There are over 300 different types of aloe vera, but only five of them are known to be useful to mankind. Of those five, the most potent is aloe barbadensis miller. It's been around for thousands of years, and it's probably been helping mankind for 4,000 years. I'd seen it in the textbooks before, but I didn't realise it was actually on the coat of arms of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, actually a picture of the aloe barbadensis miller plant. And what was very interesting was that they actually used it internally and topically, because really the, these days, the actual internal use, everybody seems to think it's a, a new thing, when in fact it's been going for hundreds of years using it internally. It looks like a cactus, but it's actually a succulent. It's a member of the lily family. Um, under the rind of the leaf, you've got a sap system. Underneath that layer of sap is what we call a mucilage layer or a slimy layer. And in it is a very important sugar, a long chain sugar, which we know affects our immune systems. And right in the middle is the inner core or gel, which is uh, the water storage organ of the plant but where it also keeps its vitamins and minerals. There are at least 75 vitamins, minerals. There are saponins, which are soapy substances. There are enzymes, which help your digestion or are anti-inflammatory. There are two different groups of enzymes. You've got antimicrobial agents that'll kill not only bacteria, but yeasts and fungi and viruses. The action of the whole is far greater than the individual actions of the groups of substances. They sort of enhance each other. To guarantee that the benefits reach you in their purest form, Forever Living Products, the world's largest growers of this remarkable plant, produce only the Rolls Royce of aloe vera. Our plants are organically grown to start with. We don't use herbicides or pesticides. Our aloe plants are harvested by hand, so only the most mature leaves are cut off the plant and those leaves are transported very rapidly to the manufacturing plant. They're processed quickly in what's called a cold stabilization process because a lot of these substances are sensitive substances and if you boil them up you'll destroy their effects. We have to add some stabilizers but they're all from natural sources and then obviously um, we put it in the bottle. But we do this without filtration and without concentration. It is important in any product to make sure that you have a decent amount of aloe vera, or it's obviously not going to work. Our main ingredient is stabilised aloe vera gel with da-da-da-da-da. You go into some shops and it's da-da-da-da-da with aloe vera, but a tiny amount. In fact, such a small amount as uh, to make me cast doubt on its efficacy. After two years of research at Oxford University into the properties and uses of aloe, Dr Peter Atherton is one of the world's acknowledged experts. The areas in which it works, I believe, are fundamentally only two. One is what we call epithelial tissue, anatomically, which, uh, for most people, it's best to think of it as surfaces and membranes. So your biggest epithelium is your skin. But of course, as the skin goes into the mouth, it changes and becomes a mucous membrane, which lines the sinuses, the back of your nose, the throat, then goes down the gullet, lines the stomach and the small bowel, the large bowel, comes out and becomes skin again. It lines the genital tract and it lines the lungs, the bronchi. So if you could think of aloe vera working wherever there is damage to surfaces and membranes. And the second area due to this long chain polysaccharide sugar, which was in that slimy bit in the leaf, is it works on the immune system as what we call an immunomodulator, which means it's a balancer. In some circumstances, it seems to enhance the immune response, but in other circumstances where the immune response is already too much, it will slow it down.